Arnold Roche or JG Perrin. And today is Beta Friday number 23. And uh, we are recording this on the 23rd. So making things exceptional. I am going to talk about an exciting project called Data in the Fast Lane. You can get Data in the Fast Lane on GitHub at github.com slash advanced auto parts slash data fast lane. And this is the first project that uh, Advanced Auto Parts, the company I'm working for, is putting as an open source project based on the Apache 2 license. So what is Data in the Fastlane? It's a very performant, easy to use ETL, extract data, transform data, and load data into another database. So let me quickly go through what's an ETL process. Let's say you've got a CSV file you have um, another CSV file, for example, another CSV file, and you've got a database. You want to make some analytics on all this, and I put all this process into a file or the screen as a monitor, for example, your standard output. Okay, standard output. Well. Where an ETL tool is useful is you put it in the middle there, and that's your ETL. So that could be data in the fast lane. And it's going to extract data, extract data, then it's going to do some transformation. Okay, it's a long word, transformation, and export the data or um, load the data into a virus destination. So that's the role of an ETL tool. And so big benefit. So data in the fast lane does all these things, and it's uh, based on a tool you all know, uh, Apache Spark. So it's rich, it's fast, it's extensible, it's open source, it's plenty, plenty of benefits. So without talking too much about it, all these things, let me show you how it works. First thing is I'm just going to read a CSV file and display the content to the standard output. So I can show you my, um, I can show you my, uh, um, my file first, and I'm going to show you my, fi my, uh, the files that I'm going to, um, use here. Okay. So I'm going to use, um, Visual code and uh, and this is okay. So you see the file; it's a very simple file. Uh, first line is right, is a um, is a header, and then I've got a few tricks. Like uh, you see this this title here is rather long. It contains comma. It is quoted by double quotes. So that's that's kind of the annoying thing. But it's kind of a oh you you see things in CSV files, right? Um, the date is month slash day day uh, slash a year so that's also a little bit of a trick there and so we'll see that's that's my basic file so when now i'm asking data in fast lane to process this file and display the content so i'm asking hey dfl sorry up dfl go there use use a recipe file so all my processing is in a, re in a repository in a in, in a recipe file which is in a demo slash oops sorry it's not demo it's doc slash demo slash recipe zero one and display that so it's going to start spark or connect to an existing cluster read the file and display what it can find on the file okay so Okay, so what I, what what do I get? What information I get? The books has twenty four rows. Okay, so that's something uh, I detect. It gives me an abstract of the file, like a like a show, and then the schema of the file. Okay, so rather you know rather simple, and it's doing doing that in in less than seven minutes, seven seconds. Let's look at the recipe file now, and to see how um, how we uh, how we can actually use it. And this is this is my recipe file. So I'm making a little things a little bit bigger. So you see, the so magic they are started by a container uh, called store, and I've got attributes to this container, and this one is called books. 
and I'm chaining operations that I want to do on books. So the first operation is to load it, and then that's my the pass to it. I'm inting Spark to tell, hey, Spark, this is a CSV file, and then it has a header, it has please inferior schema, uh, as you saw, and it's, it's the quote character is, is the double quote. And then next step is I'm taking my container books, okay, and I'm on the, and then I'm going to list the same kind of operation on it, where my first operation is count rows, so it counts the rows as the common saying. The next operation is show, which is going to show me the five first rows and truncate that so makes the thing a little bit uh, um, not too wide, so you can actually see it on the screen. And finally, uh, I'm printing the schema. Okay, so that's that's it. So easy to do something there. Okay, so you see it. I've got my my rows. I've got my records being printed and my schema. So that's a very basic example. Let's let's uh, tackle a second example in this in this in this episode of Data Friday, uh, which is going to take two files, so books you've seen there, and a, an offer file as well, a CSV file, and we're going to upload both of that to the. Um, to a, to a database, okay, to put that in a Postgres database. So you can, I can use plenty of other tools to do that. But here, if I wanted to do anything, I could do it, I could push it to Postgres, I could put it, push it to Informix, I could push it to anything based on the same recipe, okay? So let's run it. DFL and uh, this is going to be demo doc, demo my recipe two, and this one is going to be uh, load the data into a Postgres, okay? So I'm just running it, and while it's starting, I can show you my Postgres, and you see here, I don't have any tables, okay? If I refresh here, no tables, nothing, nothing here. So let's go back to DFL. Oh, it's already completed. Uh, let me refresh here. And you see my two tables. So it loaded uh, offers, okay, and it loaded uh, my books. Let's look at the data here, and you see that I've got, well, for offers, you see the names, I've got an ID, I've got a text, I've got a text there, I've got a text for link, okay, so uh, for Wikipedia, and a link for the offer on, on Amazon. Rather simple uh, thing. And if I look at my books, I'm going to look at the data there as well. See, it's pretty fast. I've got here, I've got an ID, I've got an offer ID, I've got a title for my book, I've got a release date, and I've got a link. And if you look at the types that are being generated in part of this ETL process, uh, is I've got an integer and I've got text and the date is seen as a date and you see actually the format is being really a date okay so and it's you know it's not it doesn't have to be like the date of this year or which uh, we all want to forget so so let's let's now have a look at the recipes there and you'll see that it's a little bit more complex but not that much so this is a recipe I run and I'm going to visualize it. Visual Studio Code, this one, and here is my recipe. So it's a little bit longer, okay? So the first, uh, it's it's about, yeah, it's about 80 lines of code, but, our, but if, what you can see here is, first thing is, I'm defining a connection, okay? So it's a JDBC connection. I'm going to name it destination. I could call it whatever I want. And it leverage the, the driver here, and a URL to my database. You can see that the user is advanced OSS, or the password is advanced OSS. I mean, I, of course, I, I could I could use a secret outside. I don't have to put my password in a file. This is just for demo purpose. And then I'm going to define a schema. See here, this special container called schema. And as you would define a schema for in Apache Spark, you would define a schema here. So here is na the name of my schema, and then the different columns. 
my column ID, my, my, which is a, 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 an integer, et cetera, et cetera. And what is interesting here is my release date, which is of, of, of type date. And then as I did in the first example, I'm just going to load it, okay? So same thing, I'm going to a, talk to my store, store, please load books. It's coming from data slash book slash books dot CSV. It's a CSV file. It has a schema. You see the schema here. I can actually put the schema, which I just defined before, and then I can define my, my that tell Spark is a true, uh, the, it has a header, uh, the quote character is a double quote, and the date format is uh, month slash day slash um, year. And this is leveraging the new Spark 3 syntax because data and fast lane is based out of a Spark 3. Same thing uh, for offers, okay? Uh, more simple, I'm just inferring the schema. And then I've got a bit of a, a, a bit of a debug thing here where I'm showing, uh, as I showed before, like I'm showing uh, you can see the controls, you can see the show, uh, the print schema. Same thing for offers where I'm counting the rows, uh, showing that, and print schema as well. So in a production environment, that would be completely useless, okay? No, no need for that. And finally, what I'm doing is, hey, store, uh, on your attribute, which is called books, please save it. The format is JDBC. The path is books. You overwrite if it exists. Okay, and and you use this connection called destination. And same thing for offers, you save it, format JDBC path offers, that's going to be the name of the name of the uh, the name of the table. You overwrite if it exists and destination. So that's it. So this was a very quick introduction of um, data in the fast lane. Uh, you'll see more videos from me on this one. To get data in the fast lane, well, jump to uh, GitHub, as I said. Okay, so it's GitHub uh, slash advanced auto parts. Data in uh, fast lane, it's advanced. We are, are, we are advanced uh, and advanced auto parts, and you can get uh, data in fast lane uh, for free. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Data Friday where we discovered data in the fast lane, a very simple ETL tool for uh, all of us to use, and that scales. More on that soon. Uh, more links in the in the comments where you will see more details, more videos, more recordings, more tips about using data in fast lane. And um, well, thank you so much for watching this episode of Data Friday. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.